So in this video, hopefully you've already taught yourself how to graph an ellipse when the equation's in standard form. And now let's go ahead and uh, graph an ellipse when it's not in standard form and we have to place it in standard form. So to do this, you complete the square to put it in standard form. So to start with, we're going to get our x's together. So 16x squared minus 96x and then plus 25y squared minus 200y and that equals negative 144. Didn't mess with anything there. Then we're going to factor out a 16 and you'd out of the first two, out of the first group right here. So if you take a 16 out you'd have x squared minus 6x. I'm going to leave a little spot to complete the square. I'm going to take a 25 out of the second group right here. And so you'd have y squared minus 8y. Again, leave a little spot for deposit. <laughs> and we'll leave the negative 144 there. So now we're going to complete the square. So you complete the square by taking each middle term, dividing it by 2, and squaring it. So just off to the side, I'm going to take 6 divided by 2, and it is negative. It doesn't really matter, because when you square that, you end up with 9. So we're going to add 9 here. But we added a 9 here, and if you know anything about completing the square, you also have to add something to the other side to balance out the equation. Well, we have to add 144, not 9. And the reason you add 144 is because you have to take the 16, we factored out a 16 from that. So you have to multiply that back through, distribute it back through. So 16 times 9 is 144. Okay, then do the same with 25. So 8, again, negative 8, divided by 2, squared, would be 16. So we're going to add 16 to both sides. I'm going to get rid of these now that I've figured out my numbers. And so you'd add 16 here, but again, 25 times 16 is 400. So that's what you have to add to the other side to balance the equation. So now you go ahead and factor these. So this is 16. Um, this factors to x minus 3 times x minus 3 plus 25. This factors, you could probably skip this step if you're really good at factoring y minus 4, y minus 4, whoops, not y, minus 2. And then it equals, well, negative 144 and 144 are 0, so it would just equal 400. Then your next step is we've got 16 x minus 3 squared, and you can see this thing shaping up. 25y minus 4 squared, and that equals 400. So your last step to put this in standard form is uh, this has to be 1. So you divide this by 400, divide this by 400, divide this by 400, divide everything by 400, and you'd have x minus 3 squared over 25. If you reduce the 400 and the 16, that's 1 and 25. Plus, and you do the same here, 425 would leave you 16 on the bottom and y minus 4 squared on the top equals 1. So now this thing's in standard form and we can go ahead and graph it quickly. So let me pull up, pull in some graph paper and we'll just give it a shot. So to Start with your center. Your center again is positive 3, positive 4. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. There's your center. Uh, your major axis is 5. And we'll call that one A. Your minor axis is four, uh, 4. The square root of 16 and the square root of 25. So since the A5 is under, the 25 is under the X, that means to go right and left 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's one vertice, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's the other one. 
that's your my uh, major axis there between the two vertices and then you go up and down four so one two three four I'll go down first and then up four one two three four it kind of goes up and out of my picture but I'll just rough sketch this ellipse doesn't have to be real nice if you wanted to find exact points you could um, but generally I want to just find a real rough rough sketch of this thing then to find your foci where those are located because that's also important c squared equals the square root of a squared minus b squared and so c squared equals 25 minus 16 which is 9 so c squared equals 9 and the square root of 9 is 3 so it is 3 to the right since that's where your major axes are and 3 to the left and there are your two foci for your ellipse. Now the last thing we usually find, I don't typically have my students find this, but it's kind of nice to have. It tells you how eccentric it is. If it's really close to one, it's very oblong, uh, very narrow, very wide. Uh, this one is not going to be very close to one. But you take your C value, your distance to the foci from the center, divided by your the length of your semi-major axis, which would be 5 in this case. And so 3 five is, three fifths is 0. 0.6. And we know that it's not really eccentric. You know, 0. 0.99 would be a super skinny, maybe an ellipse that looks like that. But anyway, that's just all the information you'd be required to find on a test. So. Uh, try this one out. Actually, in this one, I'm tricking you a little bit, but hit pause, give it a shot. I'm going to do it for you in, in hopefully a quicker manner. So first off, getting my X's together, I'm going to take, they're already together, so I'm going to take a 6 out of that. And so if you take a 6 out, you've got X squared minus 2X, leave a little spot, plus 6, Y squared plus 6Y, leave a little spot equals 36 then we're going to complete the square divide 2 by 1 that gives you 1 there so you would add 6 to the other side here divide 6 by 2 and square it that's uh, 3 that's 9 6 divided by 2 is 3 3 squared is 9 there we go and so you would add 54 to this other side we can go ahead and factor so that'd be 6 times x minus 1, x minus 1, plus 6, times y plus 3, y plus 3, equals 36 plus 6 is 42, plus 54 would be 96. So we've got 6 times x minus 1 squared, plus 6 times y plus 3 squared <coughs> excuse me equals 96 and the trick is that this is a circle because when we divide by 96 to make this 1 you'll reduce to the same major and minor axes so this is really a, a circle and just to show you that you know, whether it's a circle or an ellipse, it can be graphed the same way, kind of using the same process. So 6 and 96 is 1 and 16. And 6 and 96 is 1 and 16, and that equals 1. So our circle has a radius of 4. And here we go. So let me pull in some graph paper. So my center is 1, negative 3. And I kind of ran off the graph there a little bit. And that's the center of my circle. I'd go right and left 4. Up and down 4. There's the vertices. Oops. <laughs> There's the vertices of my circle. Got off just a little bit. And so here, 
we have approximately my circle of radius 4. There's no foci to find because my center is 0. Or, I mean, my center is, my radiuses were the same. My semi major and minor axes were the same. And so I kind of tricked you a little bit there. But uh, uh, just to show you, ellipses and circles uh, kind of follow the same same path. So uh, the eccentricity for this is 0 because uh, your c squared, a squared minus b squared, that, you know, the eccentricity of a circle, this would be 16 minus 16, which is 0. So c equals 0. And 0 divided by 4 is 0. So the eccentricity of a circle is 0. It's not eccentric at all. So hope this helps. Again, this is this video. I I want. I guess I'll just show you one last thing. I had a. I think graphing these particular uh, particular ellipses. I think it's very important to know the parts and how to do it by hand. Uh, recently, I was asked to cut a large pipe at a 45 degree angle. So you can see how big this pipe is compared to this big tractor in the background, a big maintainer. And so I had to cut this pipe at a 45 degree angle. Well, there's a thing called a flange wizard that's really expensive that you could buy to trace out a 45 degree angle cut on this pipe. But I was able to use just a little bit of geometry, um, figure out where my foe size lie, and make a template of an ellipse that would allow us to cut this thing at a 45 degree angle and all of that was because I was uh, because I knew how to graph an ellipse oops so there's that piece of cardboard I just had in my room and I just you know I calculated out uh, the the C the distance to the from the center to the foci there were there were my foci this is the width of my pipe 45 inches and uh, I was able to find the eccentricity of this thing and uh, calculate it because I've done this thousands of times and not that you need to do that to figure the, a problem like this out but I think that's a pretty good uh, pretty good argument to why it's important to know I mean sure your technology can do it for you but here you go because I know how to do it by hand I was able to create this template so hope this helps you out, and I will see you next time.